Hello Math 2, this is Mrs. Bricky and this video is for Unit 8, Lesson 4, Part B, where we will um, talk about the axis of symmetry and particularly focus on the standard form of the quadratic function. So standard form for a quadratic function is f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Uh, we want to have that squared term coming first, then the linear term that's just a regular x, and then the constant at the end. So one of the things that standard form makes um, really visible is the y-intercept, because if we sub in 0 into this equation, the first term becomes 0, the second term becomes zero and we're just left with C. So anytime you have a function in standard form, that constant at the end is the y-intercept. Um, but we can find out more about the function as well. Um, we can find the vertex of the function, but uh, in order to find out more information about the function in standard form, we use the axis of symmetry. So for a quadratic function that is in standard form, the axis of symmetry is the vertical line x equals negative b over 2a. Um, you might recognize that as part of the quadratic formula. So if I write out the quadratic formula over here, you can see that the axis of symmetry is just that first sort of term of the quadratic formula without the plus or minus root. And in fact, the plus or minus root is actually just giving you the location of those two intercepts on either side of the axis of symmetry. So the axis of symmetry is negative b over 2a. And then if you're trying to find the location of the vertex, you know, that axis of symmetry is giving you that x coordinate to get the y coordinate, you would just sub in that value into the function. So for example, if the axis of symmetry had a, an x value of three, then you would just sub in three into your equation to get the y, uh, y value. And that number would go here. So we're gonna try that. Uh, with three functions just to practice um, because it's kind of a new process. So we've got one parabola that's opening upward and two parabolas that are opening downward. And we're going to be finding all of the attributes of the graph. So we're going to be finding the vertex, the y-intercept. Um, we're going to state the extreme value and we're going to find the x-intercepts as well. So our function here is x squared minus 10x plus 13. Um, because our function is in standard form, let's go ahead and start with the y-intercept. If we sub in 0, only the 13 is left. First term becomes 0, the second term becomes 0, and we just have 13. So the y-intercept is 13, so I'm going to go ahead and mark that on the graph. All right, let's calculate our axis of symmetry. The formula is x equals negative b over 2a. So for this one, it's negative, <laughs> negative 10. So our b value is negative 10. And then our a value that, I, that gets doubled, 2 times 1. So remember, if you don't see a number in front of x squared and the x squared is there, that means there is 1 x squared. So if we calculate that either in our head or in our calculators, that gives us an axis of symmetry of 5. So this axis of symmetry is located at the x value 5. Well, that means the vertex has an x coordinate of 5. We just need to sub that 5 into our equation to get the y value. So f of 5 is 5 squared minus 10 times 5 plus 13. And when you're squaring, it's a good idea to do a grouping. Uh, if it's negative, it's going to make a big difference on your answer. Uh, 5 squared minus 10 times 5 plus 13 gives us negative 12. So our y value of our vertex is negative 12. So now that we know the vertex, we know the extreme value. This function has a lowest value, a minimum of negative 12. 
All right, the last thing we need to find is the location of those two x-intercepts. So when you're looking for the two x-intercepts, you are thinking about when does that function equal zero? When does it have a y value of zero? So uh, you can always, of course, try factoring it if it's in standard form. Uh, our constant is 13, so the only possibilities are uh, 1 and 13. Uh, and I think that's not going to work with a negative 10 in the middle. So factoring fails. If factoring doesn't work, we use the quadratic formula. So our a value is 1. Our b value is negative 10. And our c value is that 13 on the end. So x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c, and that is all divided by 2a. So we need to uh, clean this up a little bit. I don't recommend you type the whole thing in your calculator. It leaves, usually leads to errors. Um, it has three parts. We're going to kind of just think about those three parts uh, each individually. So negative negative 10 is a positive 10. And on the bottom, we've got 2 times 1, so that's just 2. So now we need to think about our radical. Uh, the inside of that radical, you could calculate in your calculator. Um, the negative 10 squared minus 4 times 1 times 13, that inside number is a 48. So what we're thinking about is a root 48. And in your calculator, if you simplify a root 48, that gives you 4 root 3. So we're going to put that right here, 4 root 3. So we've got 10 and 4 root 3 in our numerator as our two terms, and we've got divided by 2. So it looks like we can go ahead and simplify that fraction. 10 divided by 2 is 5, and 4 root 3 divided by 2 is 2 root 3. Remember when you're simplifying that radical term that the coefficient is what simplifies, not the number inside the radical. Okay, so those are our two x-intercepts, 5 plus 2 root 3 and 5 minus 2 root 3. Those are the exact values of the x-intercepts. Um, they're irrational numbers, but um, let's go ahead and calculate the decimal values. Um, if you calculate 5 plus 2 root 3 in your calculator, you're going to get 8.46. So that's this one. And then 5 minus 2 root 3 is uh, 1.54. And remember, your calculator has the converting button right above the enter button and it kind of looks like this with two arrows pointing outward that's a converting button that will get you to that decimal so 1.54 okay let's try the next one so this one is a reflected parabola Again, this is standard form, so let's go ahead and start with our y-intercept. If we sub in 0, we are going to get negative 19. So our y-intercept over here is at negative 19. Okay, now calculating our axis of symmetry. Um, it's negative b divided by 2a. So our a value here is negative 3. So x equals negative, negative 18, divided by 2 times negative 3. Now you can calculate that in your calculator if you want, or you can simplify it in your head. Um, in this case, if we simplify that, it is negative 3. So this axis of symmetry here cuts that parabola right in half, is at the x value negative 3. So that means that the vertex has an x value of negative 3. 
To figure out how high that vertex is, we're going to go ahead and sub negative 3 into the function. So the y value is going to equal negative 3 multiplied by negative 3 squared minus 18 times negative 3. Whoops, I got a 1 in front of my 3 for some reason. <clears throat> and then subtract 19. So if we calculate that, we get a y value of 8 for our vertex's height. So the vertex is at negative 3, 8. Okay, so um, we have the vertex value and we can see the parabola opens downward. So this one has a maximum of uh, 8. The height is 8. All right, so what we have left is our x-intercepts. Um, you can try to factor it if you think it might be factorable. With that coefficient of negative 3 and the 19 at the end, I would probably suspect that it is not factorable. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the quadratic formula. So for our quadratic formula, x is equal to negative b, and our b is negative 18 plus or minus the square root of b squared, make sure you put your b in parentheses here, minus 4 times our a value multiplied by our c value, and that is all divided by 2a. So there's the three parts. Let's simplify each of those three parts. Uh, negative negative 18 is positive 18. On the bottom, we have 2 times negative 3. That's a negative 6. <clears throat> and uh, in our radical, we have negative 18 squared minus 4 times negative 3 times 19 is going to give us 96 inside our root. Well, the square root of 96... is 4 root 6. So we can replace that with a 4 root 6. And it looks like we can simplify this one a little bit. <clears throat> um, we can divide out a factor of 2. So this would be 9 plus or minus 2 root 6. Remember the inside of the radical doesn't change there, just the coefficient. And that gives us the location of our two x-intercepts. You can kind of see evidence of the axis of symmetry there. The 9 divided by the negative 3 gives us that negative 3 uh, axis of symmetry. Um, the plus or, plus or minus 2 root 6 is going to give us the location of those x-intercepts. If you calculate in your calculator uh, the, the approximate decimal value of those two x-intercepts, uh, 9 plus 2 root 6 divided by negative 3 and 9 minus 2 root 6 divided by negative 3, you're going to get 4.63 negative and negative 1.37. So those are the approximate decimal locations of our two x-intercepts. Okay, so that is this graph, and now we just have one more. This function is g of x. We're going to try to get all those attributes labeled on our graph. Uh, let's start with the y-intercept. Because the function is in standard form, we know the y-intercept is going to be 0 plus 0 minus 21. So negative 21 for our y-intercept. Uh, to get the axis of symmetry, we're going to use our b and our a in our equation. This one has an a value of negative 1. So the axis of symmetry is x equals negative 10 over 2 times negative 1, and that gives us an axis of symmetry of 5. <clears throat> so I'm going to draw that in. 
because the axis of symmetry is at x equals 5, we know that the x value of the vertex is 5. And we'll sub that in to the function to get the y value. Negative 5 squared. <clears throat> now, the negative right there is part of the function, so that would be outside of the parentheses. The number I'm subbing in is 5, so the, the 5 is what is inside the parentheses there plus 10 times 5 minus 21. So it looks like we have a y-intercept of <clears throat> 4. If you add uh, those terms together, that gives you 4. So we now know our extreme value. The extreme value is that this function has a maximum of 4. Okay, for the x-intercepts, we are looking for the two points where the function uh, is equal to zero. We're looking for these two points. So we are trying to solve the equation negative x squared plus 10x minus 21 equals zero. Now, the other ones we looked at were not factorable, but this one is actually factorable. If you don't notice that it's factorable, it's okay. You can use the quadratic formula here, but it's a bit easier if you notice that it's factorable. If your leading term is negative, it's really smart to factor that negative out like a GCF. So that will leave us with x squared minus 10x plus 21. And now we can factor that trinomial without having to try to deal with a negative leading term. So we'll have an x and an x. Um, the factors of 21 are 3 and 7. And uh, we want both of those signs to be negative to give us a positive 21 when they multiply together. And a negative 10 is the middle. So that works great. So that means our two x-intercepts are at positive 3 and 7. <clears throat> Now, remember that negative at the front, um, that's just indicating that, the, that this parabola opens downward. That's not going to affect or change these two x-intercepts that we found. So our x-intercept here would be 7, and this one here would be 3. All right, that's it. So you've got an assignment. Um, try it out. See if you're um, being successful at this. And if you have questions or need any help with it, please let your teacher know. Thank you.